Ever played in a game where the enemy team makes defusing the spike literally impossible? I'm talking about a brimstone molly and ultimate waiting to be thrown onto the spike, some killjoy swarm grenades, and some viper snake bites coming from the sky. What's going on ProGrads family, it's your host Sergeant Frost, and today we'll be talking about a playstyle that has been gaining traction for months now and could finally make a breakthrough and become the meta. Of course, you read the title, we're talking about the seemingly indefinite stall post-plant meta. When Valorant first released, loose pug teams like G2 and TSM dominated their respective scenes. Also, teams like FaZe made a name for themselves with aggressive and loose gameplay that relied on more fundamentals rather than ability usage. But as Valorant recently hit its first anniversary, the current meta is a far cry from the free-flowing reactive play of the beta. The tagline for Masters 2 was Evolve or Die, and while at the end, Team Sentinels won with their solid fundamentals and fragging power. The scene as a whole seems to have evolved in a direction that focuses on uncontrollable stall tactics during post-plants. So what is the post-plant meta? Version 1 took a huge bounty at Masters 2 by beating Team Liquid 2-1. to not only was it unexpected, but the score of Haven was shocking. A 13-4 masterclass of utilizing Viper, Killjoy, Astra, and Sova to make defusing a bomb nearly impossible for Team Liquid. Version 1's playstyle during that match on Haven is a perfect example of a team comp that is structured around the post plant. The seemingly eternal stall potential of the four aforementioned agents leaves the defenders with the hard decision of either pushing hard to try to take out the stall agents or accept that the retake is basically impossible. The game plan here is that once the spike is planted, the post plant from the attacker side would be to just slowly bleed out the spike defusal time by using a combination of astro poles, swarm grenades, snake bites, and shock darts. The idea is that if the enemies are not immediately able to retake or pick off the key agents with utility, then the post plant will be impossible to retake, as there is just too much stall for the defenders to deal with. This has several benefits. First of all, this game plan is very efficient, as there is much less reliant on gunplay since most of the heavy lifting is done in the form of utility lineups that hit a specified area. Second, this is very safe, as utility itself costs relatively little while providing extreme value in post plants, and pretty much all utility can be used behind cover. And third, there is no counterplay except to kill the agent before they can use their utility, as there are no devices that remove molotovs like in games such as CSGO. These combined factors make the post-plant situations a nightmare for defenders, as there is very little interaction or adaptation that a team can make in that situation to salvage the round. More often than not, the only way to avoid this situation would be to never let them plant in the first place, which involves pushing aggressively as defenders to stop sight takes. But that often comes with very inconsistent results, as maps like Haven or Icebox are not the most welcoming for defender pushes. Basically, the post-plant meta strives to take utility to a whole different level by staggering them throughout the post-plant, and there's just not much counterplay. As such, you either evolve or die, as VCT Masters 2 slogan would say. But some may say these factors have been around since the beginning of the game. So why is it so strong now? To answer that, we will need to take a look at an agent that has been one of the biggest roles in enabling this playstyle, especially because she has made a resurgence into the agent meta, Viper. And after this video, if you have any questions regarding the post-plant meta or want to get a better idea of any other Valorant-related topics, come check out our website where our rating and immortal level coaches are more than happy to get you up to speed or help you improve as a player. We also have courses made by pros like Sentinels 10s and Team Liquid Scream that will teach you how to master the fundamentals and also become a master of the duelist role as well. So if any of this interests you, come visit us at ProGuides.com. And also, we have a giveaway of 8 $25 Valorant gift cards going on at ProGuides. All you have to do is subscribe to our channel and join the Discord to enter. Check out the giveaway section in our Discord community to get more details. The link to our Discord is in the description. One of the biggest initiators of this post-plant meta has been Viper, as her snakebite provides the most powerful post-plant stalling in the game. So let's quickly cover the changes that propelled Viper back into the scene. Viper was considered by a large portion of the community to be a very niche pick due to her weakness as a control agent with upfront value. Because she did not pose an immediate threat, her utility was often disrespected and easily countered by teams that rushed heavily into sites. However, with the buffs in patch 2.06, this completely changed, as Riot fixed her biggest weakness by making her abilities actually scary. The main change to Viper was that enemies who ran through Viper's Poison Cloud, Toxic Screen, or Viper's Pit were immediately struck with at least 50 damage from Decay, on top of the additional health they lose by playing inside of her utility. Ever since that buff, Viper's utility gave her a strong and unique role as a controller sentinel hybrid, which propelled her back into the meta. And in some regions like Europe, she became a must pick at the professional level. She is so strong on maps like Icebox that she had a 78% pick rate on that map at Masters 2, the third highest behind Jet and Sova. One main reason is that her buffs gave her the much needed pressure to make her utility actually stop enemies from advancing. Anyone pushing through her utility now provided defenders a window to punish them as if they had no armor. This allowed Viper to actually cut the map up with her walls and smokes instead of just visually. In fact, Viper was a little too strong, and Riot tuned her power back in patch 2.09, reducing her immediate damage to 30. While this was quite a substantial hit to her power levels, Viper was still in a better position than ever. But these factors were only what made her viable, as her smokes and walls were now actually powerful. The added benefit of her snake bites is what really enabled the post-plant meta, as Viper could hold two of them every round for little cost. The final piece of Viper's kit that makes her stand out as a dream pairing for the post-plant meta becoming so prevalent is the combination of her snake bite and poison cloud. 
This combo is potent in a post plant, and any player that knows snakebite lineups can easily win their team rounds by delaying the spike defusal or just by outright killing the diffuser. And at the same time, all this can be done behind cover or across the map even. The reason snake bites are so strong when paired with the poison cloud is because the decay essentially functions as a pseudo molotov as well. If you don't respect the decay and get shot while your HP is low and die, you basically took all the damage that was supposed to heal back up after. Additionally, snake bite makes you vulnerable, making you take double damage. Without seeing the enemy, you can deal up to 91 damage in a second with the snake bite poison cloud combo, shredding the enemy's health and providing little counterplay except to just avoid it, making it an extremely efficient and oppressive post plant stall tool. As such, the resurgence of Viper's viability as an agent also brought along tools that stall post plants like no other. Many people point towards the game slowly moving towards the undefusable bomb meta, and Viper is the prime suspect. Lothar, a Valorant caster and analyst, recently tweeted a list of viable counters to playing against Viper. The following list is kind of a meme, but it has some truth to it. Number 1. Push her. Number 2. Smoke her lineup position so she can't set up the lineup. Number 3. Molly her lineup position, as above. Number 4. Body block the snake bite. Number 5. Sage wall to bounce. It really speaks volumes about how little counterplay there is. So, before we can get into more detail about how other agents contribute, we have our question of the day. Today's question is, how do you feel about the post-plant meta? This composition is so powerful at the moment as there is seemingly no counter to it besides trying to disrupt the enemy's post-plant positions. This meta is turning Valorant from a fast-paced shooter to a slow-paced RPG, where pressing mouse 1 from nowhere near the side as Viper can secure you the round. I get why Brimstone can stop the defuse with his ultimate. It's an ability you have to get orbs and kills for, meaning you can only have it about two or three times per half. But Viper has access to two of her snake bites per round if she wants. I think that while this is very tactically smart to play this way, this game plan strategy has been taken to the extreme, and games don't feel nearly as enjoyable to watch when every other post plan just consists of lining up utility from behind a wall to stall a retake. However, I'm sure that some teams have already plans to deal with this, and I'm hopeful to see people find ways to beat this strategy. But let us know what you think, as this question definitely requires more discussion, and we also love to read your input on the situation. While Viper is already an exceptionally potent post plan agent, her stalling abilities are not completely unique to her, and other agents contribute to this perfect storm. Whilst talking about damaging enemies without seeing them, I think now is a good time to talk about another annoying agent in this composition, Killjoy. Killjoy offers more versatility and flexibility in terms of playstyle and how to set up your teammates in a round than Cypher. I'm sure we can all remember a time when she destroyed a perfectly positioned post plant or ruined a well thought out deadly defensive setup. Killjoy can be annoying to play against on any map. She seems to be able to endlessly stall any attempts to plant with her nano swarm grenades, forcing you to either stop defusing and move or die trying. Her nano swarm nades, in conjunction with her lockdown ultimate, makes it impossible to play in the tiny corners of bomb sites that do not get covered, forcing players to take substantial damage or get detained. An undesirable outcome either way. This has the effect of forcing defenders out of the site, therefore giving the attackers a free bomb plant most of the times. Killjoy has two Molotovs, each lasting 4 seconds each. Viper's Snake Bites can last up to 16 seconds, giving you a total of 24 seconds where you cannot defuse. If you run Brimstone additionally, that's another whopping 8 seconds, resulting in 32 seconds total where the bomb cannot be defused. Version 1 also added to this composition by including Astra, which contributes to the cause seamlessly. The reason Astra fits so well with this comp is her gravity well. The ability's cooldown is only 12 seconds, meaning you could hypothetically use it 3-4 to four times in a post plant to suck enemies onto the other agent's utility or even pull enemies off the bomb. Realistically, the enemy team won't be retaking for let's say 7-10 to 10 seconds, making the time where they can't be on the bomb at least 39 seconds, which leaves them with at best 6 seconds where a defuse is possible without any utility being present. With some well-timed utility, these 6 seconds won't even be continuous, as you need to defuse for 5 seconds to even hit a cutoff. That means defenders can stagger their utility by 2 or 3 seconds each time and still prevent effective defusing. In other games like Counter-Strike, you can just drop a smoke onto the bomb and put out a Molotov. In fact, the Molotovs are also balanced around having only a set airtime before exploding, so you can't throw Molotovs from across the map like Viper or Killjoy can. With that being said, Riot recently teased a new agent who will allegedly force players around them to rely on their gunplay and not their abilities. I think this agent could be the solution that Riot is looking for to return the game to its former state of gunplay mattering more than lineups. The current post-plant meta is definitely a little too oppressive at the moment, as it lacks counterplay and takes away from the tactical gunplay that Valorant tries to encourage. However, I think that with balances and new agents that could shake up the meta, we might see some changes that will either rein in this rampant meta or at least bring in some extra counterplay to make things exciting. Well guys, that's all we have for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to hit the bell notification icon to stay up to date with the latest Valorant news, updates, and guides. If you want to learn more about anything Valorant related, head over to ProGuides.com for the very best on-demand coaching. As always, it's been your host, Sergeant Frost, and good luck on the grind, ProGuides family.